Lightroom Milky Way Processing next. Hello, my name is Doug Hubble and welcome to Astrophotography Tutorials. Today I have a very special guest, Matt Smith. Matt creates these beautiful Milky Way images and he's going to show you how to process the Milky Way images in Lightroom today. He has also provided a download link where you can download his data and follow his steps in this tutorial step by step. On to you, Matt. Hey, Doug. I imported two files from last summer. Since this will be the fifth time in the last hour that I've worked on this one, I should be able to make it through pretty quick. Uh, Here's the image from last summer with the T3i and the Rokinon 14 2.8. Uh, I like to start off with doing white balance. I don't like using an eyedropper because it's kind of shady. So what we'll do is I'll turn the white balance saturation all the way on. If you don't have these plugins, they're from uh, David Kingham. And you can download them for free by him. Donate if you want to. If you don't have the add-ons, all the saturation is, is it boosts the exposure, the vibrance, and the saturation to 100. Uh, what you're looking for is an even amount of color. Your red, green, blue, and yellows. You can see it's pretty, pretty even, pretty good. Uh, if it's not to your liking or if you took the shot too warm or too cold that's how it'll end up looking uh, you can adjust the sliders just to make it that looks pretty good I like my background sky a little bit bluer anyway so I like the majority of it to be blue uh, the background or the light pollution down here we could take out with the blur in Photoshop so I'm not really worried about it right now uh, once your white balance is done, all the saturation is done, turn saturation off. And uh, next thing we'll do is lens correction. So we'll boost contrast all the way up, give it a little bit of exposure. And you want your lens correction, you want the outer edges to be just brighter than the background somewhere around 50 since I use the T3i I will be doing a little bit of noise reduction and I like to use the core namely the uh, halfway between the dust and the brighter part of the core because that's the, the focus of the image anyway so that's the one you want to look the best and you don't want to use too much noise reduction because if you do the Milky Way looks fake like it was painted on with watercolor uh, too little and you won't be able to sharpen it later on in Photoshop so you need to find middle ground for this image I know it to be around 20 and if you look in the little sample box here you can see the difference between 0 and 20 that's done make the sliders go back down and we will start with basic adjustments give a little bit of exposure boost the contrast and this will be different for every image these are just basic adjustments you'll make the highlights and the whites will go up but you don't want to go up too high on the whites if you notice uh, light polluted sky right here if you go up too hot uh, too far it'll really start to blow out the rest of the background so but you want to bring it up noticeably enough that the whites here in the Milky Way really start to blow out not blow out but uh, pop uh, a good rule of thumb for the whites and the blacks that I found is that the black will usually be the opposite number of the white so we'll go and again you don't want to go too far down on the blacks because you risk 
blacking out the top part of your frame. Uh, shadows, if you're going, if you're planning on using your foreground as a brighter part of the image, I wouldn't go down with the shadows. I would go up just a hair. Uh, but since I'm using this as a silhouetted foreground, I can actually come down with it, and that'll help uh, the dust lane stay darker. Maybe not that far down. Eh, somewhere right in there. Uh, clarity is the only other one I use, and usually you won't go over 15. If you do use it, you want to keep it. If you go up too high, you'll notice. You can see the difference in the image whenever you change it. It looks not pastier, just it looks kind of faker. Really powerful tool. So that's why 12 is a pretty default number. That looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, so without using any brushes at all, so far we've gone from that to that with no brushes. Uh, the only brushes I do use in Lightroom is if you have, again, if you have the plugins for the Night Sky from David Kingham, uh, the best tool ever invented is the Enhanced Foreground. And I use that on the majority of my landscapes, but like I said, I won't use it on this one because it's staying silhouetted. Uh, very, very powerful tool. Good stuff. Makes it look like art. Uh, for the for uh, for this video, be doing exposure and temp. So exposure, you want to get the entire Milky Way. Any part you think there might be a dust lane, paint over it with exposure. Uh, it's just a crudely painted on. It doesn't have to be exact because, you know, we're going to blur it out later anyway. Leave the exposure, the default where it's at. will boost contrast a pretty good amount. And we can play with the highlights and shadows. We just really don't want to blow out because those highlights, I mean, you can see just by moving the slider barely how much it actually affects it. Uh, Again, we might have gone a little bit too much with the blacks earlier, so you notice up here we're starting to lose a little bit. If you want to go over it with another exposure setting just for up here, that's perfectly fine. Uh, once we have all that done, we will lower the exposure. So, try 45. I think that looks pretty good. Tell you what, just for the sake of it, let's give it another brush. Just this tippy top part right here. And we'll do the same thing. We'll boost the contrast and bring down the shadows a little bit, so maybe the highlights. And then lower it just to where it blends in. You don't want to pop in too much because then it'll really stick out like a sore thumb. That looks pretty good. You can see we have that added dust lane in there that we didn't have earlier. But 35 would work pretty good. Uh, Alright, and the last brush we'll use in this tutorial... And it's optional. If you want to use it, you can. If not, that's fine. But I like to use the temp brush. We'll bring the density down to about 60. Because it's a very powerful tool. Uh, I like to use it two times. I'll use it to be cooler in the Sagittarius cloud area. Along with the little nebulosity. Nebulosity around here and then we will move the slider up you really don't want to overdo it 
both of the temp corrections will usually be in single single digit numbers. I think five works pretty well. We'll do another one, but this time with warmer. And what we'll do is we'll brush in all these warmer areas. We can even throw a little bit in down here. The key with using the temperature is subtlety. Very, while this looks bad right now, we're going to lower it again and you'll be able to see. And we'll blow out that core a little bit. Okay. We'll lower this back down and again, single digit number, probably below five. That doesn't look too bad. We'll export this to Photoshop, but before we do, see what we started out with. Just with a few adjustments and Lightroom, and that's what we ended with. We'll export this to Photoshop and finish off our adjustments in there. Well, you've just seen part one of two parts of Milky Way image processing. Matt went covered here in Lightroom how to process it, and in the next Part, he's going to show you how to finish it up in Photoshop. If this is your first time watching, I would like you to subscribe. I publish two astrophotography videos on the 1st and 15th of every month. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.